Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing point to point acceleration and top speed tests for a number of different settings for the Suron. Now the first setup is going to be the stock battery and the stock controller. The second setup is the stock battery with an upgraded controller. And the third setup is going to be a bypass battery with an upgraded controller. Now, there's a couple things that we want to prioritize when we were deciding how to do these tests. The first one is repeatability. This test needs to be easy to get right over and over again. The second thing that we wanted to get right um, was accuracy. So to do this, we wanted to limit the number of variables that can change between the trials. And the third thing that we wanted to prioritize was versatility. We didn't want any particular setup to have an advantage in these tests because we don't want to put out skewed results. So to set up both of our bikes, we went back to the 48 tooth stock sprocket. And um, as you know, Riley and I both have our own bikes. And since we weigh different weights, we wanted to do um, five trials each on our own bikes. Now with these setups, all the parameters and everything is the same. Everything is equal between the bikes but we're just going for 10 trials total. Now, for the top speed test, we, um, we ride the bikes downhill. And the reason for this is it's easier on the bike. And when we're going downhill, the thing that limits the, mo the top motor speed is how much amps the controller is able to run through the motor. Going downhill isn't going to affect the top speed. It just makes it a little bit easier to get there. So I want to talk about why we didn't do any of our testing on the trails for this video. And the main reason for that is there's just too many variables on the trail. There's line choice and there's a lot of different things can af that f affect how bikes perform on the trail and we didn't feel that that was going to be a good way to test the difference between these different setups. Also, on the trail, when we go to a bypass battery, the acceleration and top speed difference is so huge that you simply would not be able to keep up with it on the stock setup. Another reason that we didn't do the range test, other than there being too many variables to control, is just the way that electric motors discharge. So, in order to do a range test between the different setups, we would need to be riding at the exact same throttle input, the exact same speed for a very long period of time. And that's just something that's not realistic, especially when you're talking about the differences between a bypass battery and a stock battery. Of course, if you're discharging more power, your range is going to decrease. That being said, if we were to do a test where both bikes are riding the exact same speed the same amount the entire time, you're not going to see much difference in range because the controller is pulling the same amount of battery. Now there are some efficiency differences between the stock controller and the upgraded controller, but they're really not large enough to do a whole test to figure out how that really pans out. You're going to see a much bigger difference in battery usage changing your sprocket up than you will with your battery or controller. Alright, so we're going to show you some of the test footage and if you'd like to skip that, then you can just go ahead and see the results.
focus, there we go. 43.9 miles per hour. focus 59.5 all right so on to the results from the testing we're going to start off with the uh the stock battery and stock controller and we're not the point to point distance doesn't matter uh, as well as the time doesn't matter that much i'll list them off just so that you know but really we're going to be dealing with percentages here because um, that's the most relevant as people are going to have different tires different wheel sizes uh, different sprockets and whatnot. So, uh, starting with the stock battery and control, stock controller, we had an average time of 6.31 seconds and a top speed of 43.9. A lot of people are going to say, but my Saron hits 50. Uh, if you use GPS, you'll find that that isn't true. The speedometer uh, on your stock bike is not, not entirely accurate. Uh, moving on to the stock battery and ASI controller, we're looking at an average of 5.82 seconds and a top speed of 52.5 miles per hour. And if you look at the bypass battery in the ASI controller, that is an average time of 5.2 seconds with a top speed of 59.5 miles per hour. So that change from stock just to ASI on the stock battery is a 7.8% increase in power or in acceleration and a 16% increase in top speed. When you go to the bypass battery, you're looking at a 17% increase in acceleration and a 26% increase in top speed, which is pretty significant. If you're looking for some fairly non-scientific results regarding range, me and Cole uh, a couple of videos back went to Agnes, Oregon to do some 
uh, just some riding and testing on these controllers and we found that uh, even though Cole was riding uh, with a larger tooth sprocket and he weighs less, that throughout the duration of the hour or so long ride, uh, I ended up with about 5% more battery than he did on the ASI controller when he was running stock. Another thing to note in this testing, we used uh, one battery per bike uh, throughout the entire test without charging it. So these results represent the worst case scenario as we started with the uh, stock controller at the highest battery uh, and the bypassed uh, battery with the ASI controller was at the lowest percentage. So if you were to replicate these tests and do every one with battery at 100%, you should actually see a higher margin of increase in acceleration and top speed um, just based on the fact that we did not have a full charge on the second and third test. So those are the results from testing. Uh, as far as controllers go, be on the lookout uh, over the next couple weeks. We are not accepting pre-orders, no wait lists or anything like that. We want to sell them when we have them in stock. We don't want to have any false promises. The best way to stay up to date is just subscribing to our YouTube channel with notifications on and checking the website emotobros.com. We got a couple things for sale over there right now that you can check out. We plan to have that controller kit up soon. If you like this video and you're interested in others like it, please consider liking and subscribing to stay up to date on everything on our channel.